So is the BMW 335i a reliable car? We're going to answer that and several others right now. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Mark with Exotic Car Play Place. So the first question comes from Mahuk BB3. He asks, what about the 2011 BMW 520i V6? He also asks, is it a good car and will it last up to 150,000 kilometers? Currently, it's at 60,000, so is it good? Will the car last? Well, I just want to answer that question and say, for general information, the 2011 BMW 528 is not a V6. First of all, it's actually an inline six, and it's just the way it works. That's one of the last inline six engines that you're going to find in a normally aspirated form in any BMW. As a matter of fact, this is really one of the last generational ones. And BMW did an upgrade in that last year in the 5 Series. They bumped it up. So they bumped up the power and torque a little bit, up to 240 horsepower and 230 foot-pounds of torque. Now understand, it's one of those silky smooth inline six-cylinder engines that BMW is so well known for. It's one of the latest, one of the greatest of that engine configuration. Realize this as well, any of the 28 series after that, pretty much, including the 328s and the 528s, eventually came with the 2-liter turbocharged 4-cylinder engine. So if you don't want that turbocharged 4, you might have to get into something like this, where it's one of the last of that inline 6. Is that car reliable? Absolutely. Any of those silky smooth, normally aspirated inline 6-cylinder engines that BMW produced were very reliable very stout and they were good for a lot of kilometers the only thing with those is they needed attention on the cooling system no secret there guys plastic water pumps plastic thermostats plastic radiators and plastic valve covers so they had a little bit of plastic issues sometimes you had cooling issues leaks and whatnot just stay on top of that outside of that that engine will last a lifetime so moving on to the second question that comes from a Camilo Duarte who basically asks, so which M cars are the best deal at the time? What do I think about the M2 competition? Well, actually, they are great cars. First of all, the M2 competition is likely one of the best driving cars. Not likely. It is actually one of the best driving BMWs today. You know, sadly enough, over the last generations, the M3s, M4s have grown very, very large. The original M3s, you think back into the E30s, were very small, petite, stout little cars that were light and nimble. They were very hands-on and user-friendly, but they just they gripped the road and you felt like there wasn't a lot of weight against you. The car just was very, very nimble. Didn't even matter if you were in an M car or not. It could have been even a 325 E30. They were great cars. Over generations, of course, a lot of these cars have grown in weight and size and girth more technology, they've just gotten heavier and plumper. Now the new M3s and M4s are really, really great cars, but they're not really what I'd consider a great deal by today's standards. $110,000 Canadian for a new M3? That's not a great deal. In my opinion, the M2, and specifically the M2 competition, adds a little more edginess yet, is actually one of the best driving M cars right now. For, for driver engagement, it's the best, most exciting car that you can buy in the M lineup right now. And not only that, it is one of the best deals too, because it's far short in price of a new M3 or M4. So yes, in fact, the M2 competition is one of my very favorite M cars right now in the current market. And because it's an M car and because the other cars are getting a little chubby and this is getting back to more of the roots, I believe that this car will likely hold some value to it in the future. Unlike some of the other cars that become a little more generic, the M2 cars, particularly the competition versions, are always going to have some value. So I hope that answers your question. So the next question is from a Hammerhead823. And he asked me, are you a BMW fan? He says, I love BMW so much. But it's without a doubt that Audis are more reliable than BMWs. So first of all, Hammerhead, I want to say that it depends on what car you're driving, of course. I mean, an M car is going to be less reliable than a standard Audi A3, for example. It just depends. You've got to compare apples to apples. Well, as a matter of fact, BMWs tend to be slightly more reliable, as you probably noticed in a previous video of mine. But more importantly to the question, am I a BMW fan? Absolutely, I'm a BMW fan. Do I believe they're the most reliable cars on the planet? No, not even close. However, why do I like them? Because they're great driver's cars. 
You ask the question about being a fan, why? Because BMW is one of the few luxury brands that you can get a manual transmission in many of their cars, like a lot of the M cars and M3, M4, M2s. You can get a manual gearbox in those cars. Sadly, you can't anymore in an M5 or any of the other models. But it's because you can get either a double clutch or a manual transmission that keeps bringing me back. Porsche is not, as well as another German brand that has manual transmissions. Audi, in certain cars, you can get manuals or DCTs as well. That's where Benz no longer has manuals and likely that's why I would not buy a Mercedes today because you cannot get a manual. I'm a little bit of the old school and because the old school says it's a manual gearbox, that's what keeps me coming. Now that being said, the new BMW 3 Series doesn't have a manual. So we'll talk about this in a couple of years. But generally speaking, I like BMWs because they drive well, they perform well, they look great, and overall, they're just a sporty vehicle and a well-built product. So the next question actually comes from a gentleman by the name of Fabius Maximus Kunstater. Interesting name, but hey, he asked the question, is the new BMW B47 inline turbo diesel engine more reliable than its predecessor? Being that the N47 had a lot of problems. Well, what did the N47, the turbo diesel have for issues? Well, the main one, of course, being broken timing chains, either just getting too slop or what happened was the plastic guide rails would wear out too quickly, turn brittle, fall apart, and the chain basically got too loose, skip a cog, boom, and the engine would fry. Very, very detrimental situation, obviously. A lot of people were just they were crushed by the problem of this financially. And you couldn't even replace the timing chain that cheaply because it was up against the firewall and the whole engine had to be lifted out. So it was a real expensive proposition to deal with in the, in the first place, even preventatively, let alone if it failed completely and you fried the entire engine. The later N47 engines got a little better. They had made a revision to that. But as far as I know, I haven't heard of really any issues with the B47, which essentially is the predecessor to the N47. It's also the 16.5 to 1 compression ratio turbo diesel engine. So after talking to a lot of people and researching, I really can't find a whole lot of negative information on the B47 turbo diesel engine, the newer version. It appears to be a lot more solid. So I think BMW got their act together resolved some of the problems that they found in the original N47 and made a better car. The N47 as well had wastegate issues where the spring would stick and you'd have boost leak, which, which would essentially cause you, you know, poor running, lower power, poor fuel economy. That doesn't seem to be an issue that's afflicted the B47 either. The B47 on the other hand though, has an issue with the EGR or whatever. So it sort of plugs off. You've got to get that taken care of. But outside of that, the B47 seems to be a lot more reliable than the N47 ever could dream to be. And so my last question comes from Shaw Shawi, who asked the question, is the BMW 335i reliable? Well, first of all, let's start out by saying, in short, no. In long, well, there's two versions of the 335 engines that were available and one of them being the N54, and the later being the N55. The later N55 engine was improved. They went to a single turbo twin scroll. They changed the injectors. They made some rework on some of the engine parts. In general, it was a lot more reliable. The N54, which was the original that you saw in say a 2007 up to about a 2010 model year in say the three series cars, the N54 made similar power so they didn't really upgrade anything in terms of output to the newer car, but the original N54 had lots of problems like wastegate rattle, fuel injectors leaking down, valve cover leaks, oil filter gasket leaks, turbo problems, high pressure fuel pump would crap out and those were big bucks, as well as carbon buildup. You'd have excess amounts of carbon building up in the intake because it's direct injected engine. You always had to go for a walnut blast as part of a maintenance routine or regimen on that car. The worst part is it also didn't have what you'd have in the M cars where you had a limited slip differential. Now that's not a reliability issue per se, but it's a drivability issue. If you want to modify these cars, it has a less than perfect differential to support the power upgrades. But generally as a rule, the N54 was very poor in terms of reliability. One of the worst engines for reliability in BMW's world. Now the N55 of course was better. So in general, I would say, so if reliability is your game, you go with the N55, which is the later version because it was just redesigned 
It is a more reliable engine all the way around. If you're looking for performance upgrades, the N54 is your beast because it takes better to performance mods. There's more aftermarket support on the tuning. And as well, it has forged internals, which holds up better. Basically like the old 2JZ from Toyota in the Super Turbo, it just does better with high levels of boost. So at the end of the day, it depends what you want, but overall reliability, don't go for turbocharging if reliability is your primary concern and both of them are turbos. So at the end of the day, no, they're not overly reliable. So everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I just wanted to answer some of the questions that have been building a little bit over the last little while. I thought I'd give it to you straight like this. We'll be getting back to our regular content again here for Sunday, but make sure you give the channel a thumbs up, like, share it with your friends and social media, of course. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell, which kind of tells you when the next great video is out. So hope to see you guys on the next one. Can't wait. See you soon. Bye-bye.